Freer in episode 12, a real hero. That's saying a lot in a show like this. With so many heroes. Finally in the 29 year benchmark. We survived winter, and then we got winter. Huh? Free Rune's turn to die. Wanting your hands, yeah. Guys be like, <laughs> let me show you how strong I am. I swear I can carry you. I'll carry you all the way. You're so light. <laughs> yeah, but what is money when you have Nen? Right, that's kind of what I'm saying. Maybe it'll become a real hero sword through action. I'll be go back. Childhood friends. <laughs> and that spurned him on to defeat the Demon King. That's all it took. Real though, I've been there. I can see these two did a lot for each other. <laughs> Iser likes it. She dreamed a dream. I can, but I prefer being carried. <laughs> totally she could. Everyone comments on Fern's smell. <laughs> Give it to him. Give her to him. You can trust Stark. Wow. The trust issues. It's not a hair trigger for the pervert thing. Like, dude just didn't have a shirt. He's like, pervert. Stark trying to help out. Pervert. You call that a village? What? We don't live long here. We have a lifespan of 11 years. Now, speaking of which. You know, like, I don't know if this is the way it's gonna go, but what would be cool, and could be the way it's gonna go, is like, the sword him will defeat the Demon King with is just the fake sword he had. Because hero comes from within. Oh, it's King Arthur's sword in the stone. Or did he? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. I can think of a few reasons why he wouldn't. Oh, that's so adorable when she's angry. Listen, bro. No one controls free room schedule. Hey, free just responsible for the whole country. Is she the only one living here? Is she the village chief just by default? Poor randomly generated enemies. It's how you level up though. Maybe the other, the one other villager is there. Wow, did Sark just defeat them by jumping in front of them? Wow, that's amazing. Oh, that's the mom. Or the male. Take your pick. The Lord. Awesome. That amount of calm. Freewin couldn't fight it because she'd end up obliterating, obliterating the cave as well. Uh oh. Okay. Just obliterated the moon instead. Himmel couldn't pull it. That's why I never mentioned it. I love it. That's what I thought it was going to be. Nevertheless, he just ate that ego blow. Prove it through action. Yeah, what a boss. I love it. Yeah, speaking of appeals to authority. With his fake sword. I get the title now. 
Some branding involved. I don't know. People need the narrative and story. I said this one episode early. You hope the labels and credentials correlate with the ability, but like it, the, it's not the ability. It's just the label. I've also been thinking a lot just in talking to people who are not, let's say, in the best of places. It could be just a coincidence in my specific case, but I've noticed like a, a parallel that there's a running story in people who feel the most depressed or sort of existentially defeated where they're focusing on a lot of things that are the least in their control. They're like outsourcing their agency to something that they can never touch, which again is not to say they haven't identified some kind of truth about the difficulty of their situations. It's just that by making that the sole focus, they are then chaining themselves to a narrative designed to prevent any kind of improvement or change. Himmel being the antithesis of that, where he could have used the story like, oh, I'm not the real hero. This journey is over. But instead was like, well, that is what it is. And I'm going to continue my journey and do what I need to do. Separately, also Himmel just being the master of PR, image manipulation. Poor Hemley went into all this, all this effort to establish himself in history and be noticed by the whole world when the only person whose attention he really wanted was Freerun. <laughs> Maybe you can pull it. Yeah, just give it a tug, why not? You never know. What was that? Oh, so other people do live here. Don't tell me how to manage my time. I got firm for that. Did Sark try? I bet he tried. Or was there just too much respect for the sword? Yeah, look at this. This place just screams, cutting loose. Something about the, the wooden logs. Stark's cutting loose is just a big bowl of ice cream. Oh no, we put so much effort into Fern's birthday, but not Stark's. I think we see who Freerun's favorite is. <laughs> he would like to not be so lonely. Like some company and some ice cream. I was way too excited about this. Oh, so she did prepare. Okay, that's a relief. I'm glad. Finally got a look in that chest. What? Pervert. She's gonna... yeah. Are we fanservicing? Is this fanservice? And there's no need to cover up. We already established there's not much to look at, according to Fern. Come to think of it, Fern is accusing everyone of being perverted, yet she's the one that used the see-through spell on Stark, the hypocrisy. That might explain it, actually. Maybe that's why she's so quick to point out perversion. She's the actual pervert. What is that called? The reaction formation? Maybe just, you know, like, spend time with him. He's always alone in the town. She really cares. She's trying. That will come across. I like how she says like a pine cone. I, I can already anticipate the comments. People are going to be like, oh, you see how all these little things in her suitcase have meaning? Please someone tell me what the pine cone is. <laughs> My gift to you is stomaching your presence for a day of ice cream. Sark is let loose, <laughs> let loose on this town. Oh, he's using his birthday to help people. Just, just screams loneliness. How does the town function without Stark? Man, it's like Tanjiro levels of side questing. And no one can tie their shoelaces. I mean, he just would have no one to use it on. It really does, though. I guess. Imagine him saying this out loud and then telling her about it later. <laughs> Big news, Fern. There's a cloud that looks like boobs and one that looks like a turd. <laughs> oh, so serendipitous. He's learning. He's, he's growing. Yes, he would, of course. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Stark. I can tolerate your company. Maybe he forgot. Have you never gotten a gift? My birthdays from you are kind of underwhelming. They're like not really that important. I get it. My birthday is a few days after Christmas, so I, I get a lot of like Christmas birthday present hybrids. <laughs> not that I care. So it's a was that his father we saw in that brief one second confusing flashback? Maybe Stoltz's brother? 
There he is. Wow, Stark really a disgrace. Warrior who takes axes to the abs in order to win. This also has parallels to the sword thing. A lot of these episodes have really nice, concise, overlapping, interwoven themes. He didn't let that stop him. Oh no, not my perfect white robe that signifies my status as a warrior. You fool. Come on, brother, be cool. Be cool, please. Oh. What a relief. A little bit of warmth in the darkness. You could have seen that going either way. And there he is, getting down in the mud. Part it probably saved them. Oh, I didn't know it was the tragic backstory episode. Oh no. Ouch. But I'll bet that's what his brother would have wanted. What was that flash of the sword? Oh, that's the, the true hero sword. It looks a little bit shifted. He probably would at one point in his life, but he has a story like that too. This is cool, you get the opportunity to be his first gift. Hmm, it's like a little dilemma. Probably wants her to choose anyway. It came up in Hunter Hunter as well. You have an extreme failure in a way that's devastating. It then starts to consume you. You like hate yourself for it and you vow to never have that happen again. But the question inevitably emerges. The next time it happens, will I be capable? And the answers are really unsatisfying. I don't know. But like, I think you have to sort of let that be what it is because you don't. And instead you put all that energy and effort into preparation, which Stark has. Physically or in a skill level, you train for it. Mentally, you think about it. You put yourself into that situation of fear meditatively again and again. In terms of action, if possible, you expose yourself to gradually increasing levels of that danger or that thing. And then you just have faith. I think that's what Stark has done, though that doubt will always be there. You might even say that doubt is an essential part of it. it it's like a reminder that you need to do work. That's cool. Silver bangle, does that come with defensive properties? Yes, please. And knew that. I was about to say that, yeah, like, not exactly the queen of grace, socially. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Imagine that. Warriors to me. That's really something I was saying in the last episode about the labels not mattering. It's really cool that Freerun carrying out this tradition on behalf of Aizen. Oh, interesting. They share that. That triggered that memory, I guess. Yeah, that's what I thought. He maybe just forgot in his grief and guilt. It's also notably not him fleeing. It's like him being told to go. Oh, it's an emotional birthday. It's bittersweet. Stark missing out, but oh well. Damn, this hair trigger. Fern, oh, <laughs> although Fern pouring on her free run would be the only possible way that Stark could use it. Almost engineering the very situation she, in name, wants to avoid. I got my eyes on Fern. <laughs> I have suspicions. Watch her steal it out of the luggage. If it was my birthday, I would want free run to give me the pine cone so she could explain to me why she has a pine cone. This show really does everything well. Like the way it, it seamlessly slips from this just intense, action-packed series of episodes a couple episodes back to these two like really heartfelt, amazing, thematically coherent and touching episodes is pretty remarkable. The Himmel reveal is so cool. It's not, you know, this prophecy thing. You're just born into the prophecy and the prophecy reveals the prophecy, etc, etc. But it's just a man choosing his own fate. Stark, to a certain extent, doing that as well. You know, labeled as a failure. Having someone to believe in him, which, come to think of it, might be true for Himmel as well. You know, the people that are traveling with him. Starting his adventure off with a massive, I'll call it failure just for lack of a better word, but no fault of his own. Somebody who flees to someone who doesn't flee. Charting his own course and making his own destiny. Not over-focusing on that, which is unchangeable, but instead on that, which is actionable. I want to talk about something, but for for privacy sake, I have to keep it a little bit ambiguous. 
I have experience with people very close to me who seem to believe in a kind of curse, you know, like I wasn't born like them. I wasn't born like those people. I wasn't born with XYZ. It's my lot in life based on the cards I was dealt to be this hand. And it's so painful to me to watch because looking at any one individual, I adore them, right? I love them. I see their gifts or else I wouldn't care at all, you know? And from that perspective, it's like the curse is exactly that pattern of thought. It's not anything else, which is again, not to say that there aren't material difficulties to each person's reality. It's not to say that one's birth or environment or circumstances doesn't play a role. It plays a massive role in the just material realities of, of where you start from there on out. Assuming you have a modicum of stability in the society in which you live, your fate is kind of in your hands. And I think often, not always, but often the extent to which one does not see that fate is in their own hands is the extent to which they're afraid of taking it into their own hands because it being a fate-based thing or just, you know, like this terrible aura, terrible essence permeating your existence gives you kind of an out. It's a comforting excuse that that, well, I hate my life and I hate where I am, but at least I have something to blame. I'm not hating on that at all. In fact, I find it deeply sympathetic. I think I've been there at least in certain ways. Maybe I continue to be there in certain ways, but the opposite is so beautiful to see. It's something I really wish for the people I care about.